What's up, Cal gang? Welcome back to physics. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So we've got a 60 Newton weight, and it's beheading by the string that has two forces pulling on it in either direction. So for part A, our goal is to find the tension in this diagonal part of the string, and then part B is to find the forces required to hold the system like this. So this might look like a complicated problem, but I promise it's going to be really easy, and I'm going to show you how we do it. So always when you start, you want to do a force body diagram. So we're looking at part A. We want to find the tension in this string. So we want to make sure where we choose our force body diagram, it involves the tension of this string. So I'm going to choose this location here, where these three forces interact. So we're going to draw right here. So this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. So let's draw our forces. So the first force, of course, this weight is pulling down. So there's going to be a weight due to this block. So we're going to label this uh, W. Right. And so I know we're here, and so there's going to be a tension in this string holding the weight, but that tension is going to be the same as the weight. So the next is the tension of this diagonal string. So we know it's going to go this way. We know that that's going to be a 45 degree angle. And let's label that tension 2. Let's label these parts. Let's label this, this part of the string up here 1, and label that part 2. So this is 2, this is 1. So then this becomes tension 2. So then we also have force two pulling to the right. So we can draw force two going this way. All right. So now looking at force body diagram, like for part A, we're trying to find the tension in the diagonal string. So we want to find T2. How are we going to find T2? Well, we know we have two equations we can use in force body diagrams. Those are some of the forces in the X and some of the forces in the Y. So if we do some of the forces in the x, our two equations will be t2 and force 2. But we have two unknowns, so we'll have two unknowns in one equation and we won't be able to solve. But if we do some of the forces in the y, we're going to have weight and tension 2. And we're given weight, so we can solve for tension 2. That's why we're going to want to do some of the forces y first. So let's start with that. Some of the forces in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration, right? That's the equation right there. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. But this system is at equilibrium, right? Nothing is moving, so the weight is not moving, the force is pulling, but nothing is moving, so there's no acceleration, and so we can cancel that out. And that tells us that the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. But that's not useful, we need to add the forces up in the y direction. So we're looking at this force body diagram in the y direction, what forces are acting in the y direction? Well, of course there's the weight, so negative weight is pulling down, and then force of tension too is pulling up. But tension two is pulling at an angle. So when we have an object, or when we have a vector pulling at an angle, we need to split it up into x and y components, right? So let me draw a picture for this tension two. So here's tension two, right? Tension two, and then there's this 45 degree angle. So we want to find just the tension in the y direction, which is just going to be this vector here. Then there's also tension two in the x direction. But we're interested in tension two in the y direction because we're doing some of the forces in the y direction. So this becomes tension two y. So to solve for tension two y, we're gonna to need to take cosine because we want an adjacent and an hypotenuse. So we know that cosine of 45 degrees is equal to adjacent tension, tension two y over hypotenuse test tension two. So what we can do is we can multiply tension two over we get tension two cosine of 45 is equal to tension two y. So now we have something for tension two y. Because tension two y is equal to tension two cosine 45, we can plug that into this equation. So we're gonna get that zero is equal to negative weight plus tension two cosine of 45. So now we have this equation, and we know what weight is, so let's plug in what we know for weight. So we know weight, it's equal to 60, so it's going to be negative 60 plus tension 2 cosine of 45. So now we just have one unknown, tension 2. That's what we want to solve for. That's the tension in the diagonal string. So let's add the 60 over. So then we have 60 is equal to tension 2 cosine of 45. Then let's divide by cosine of 45 to get 60 over cosine of 45 is equal to tension 2. So then you do the math on that in your calculator, and you get tension 2 is equal to 84.9 newtons. So there you go, we solved part A. Pretty chill, right?
So let's move on to part B, force F and force, uh, force F1 and F2. So it's gonna be a similar process, right? So let's go ahead, I'm gonna erase this stuff we don't need. So we're gonna keep this force bonded diagram though, because we're trying to find force two, so let's start with force two. So like we said, we chose some of the forces in the Y to not include force two, but now that we know, the, now that we know what tension two is, we can solve for force two using some of the forces in the X. So some of the forces in the X, it's mass times acceleration, but we're not moving, so acceleration is zero. And then we're gonna add them up. So it's gonna be negative tension two, because tension two is pointing backwards in the X direction, but only what's happening in the X direction. So similarly to how we have to find tension two in the Y, we have to find tension two in the X. Then we can add that to force two. Now force two only acts in the X direction, so we don't have to do anything to that. So now we need to find tension two in the X direction. So let's go back to our figure here. So we know what tension two is, so we want to write tension two X in terms of tension two in this angle. So it's opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be sine. So sine of 45, is equal to tension two x over tension two. So if we multiply tension two over, we get tension two sine of 45 is equal to tension two x. So that's what we can plug in over here. Sit down. So we have zero, it's equal to negative tension two sine of 45. Right, we just plugged in tension two x that we just found into that and then added it to force two. So let's, let's move one of these over to the other side to get tension two sine of 45 to equal to force two. Then let's plug in what we know for tension two. So this is gonna become 84.9 sine of 45 degrees is equal to force two. So you plug this into your calculator and you get that force two is equal to 60 kilonewtons, or 60 newtons. All right, pretty cool, right? So if we're pulling down that weight, 60 kilonewtons, the one to the right is also 60 kilonewtons. Okay, so we've done all we can do here. Now we need to find force one. So we need to go up to this point and make another force body diagram. So let's get rid of all of this. And let's draw our next force body diagram. So X, Y. So now we have so we're drawing here, right, at this intersection here. So tension two is gonna be pulling down to the left and it's 45 degree angle. And this tension two is the same as this tension two, right? Because the tension in this rope is gonna be constant throughout. It's gonna be pulling down instead of upward this time. So then there's also gonna be that tension one. And then there's gonna be that force one pulling to the left here. That's force one. Okay, so this is our new force body diagram. Uh, so what do we want? So we're solving for force one, and we know tension two, but we don't know tension one. So we don't want to do some of the forces in the y direction because we're not looking for tension one. And anyway, force one isn't even in the y direction. So our goal, let's use some of the forces in the x. All right, we know it's equal to zero, so we're at equilibrium at this point. So it's gonna be minus force one because force one is pulling to the left, but then we're gonna add it to tension two in the x direction. So what is tension two in the x direction? Well, let's look at our figure here. So tension two in the x direction is this side of the right triangle. So if we want to solve for tension two in the x direction, we're going to use cosine, right? Cosine is adjacent to right hypotenuse. So cosine of 45 is equal to adjacent to tension two x over hypotenuse, which is tension two. You see that triangle? So we move tension two over. So now we can plug this into our equation here. So let's subtract, or let's add force one to both sides to get force one is equal to tension two x, which is just tension two cosine of 45. So we know what tension two is, so we can just plug that in. We get force one is equal to 84.9 cosine of 45. So you do the math on this, and you get force one is also equal to 60 kilonewtons. And there we go, so we finished the problem. So we've solved all of it. So if you hold force one and force two at 60 newtons, I do not know I wrote kilonewtons, it's not kilonewtons. 60 newtons, right? 
If you hold force one and force two at 60 newtons, it will hold that weight up in this position. Pretty cool, right? So that's how you solve this kind of problem. If you have any uh, physics problems, feel free to check out my playlist. I got a whole lot of problems just like this from the book. Um, and also feel free to ask any questions in the comments and I'll try to get to you. And yeah, so I'll see you in the next video. Peace.